Hey all, hope you all are doing well. Myself, Dr. Amit Maheshwari. Today we are going to discuss the one of the most common hemoglobinopathy that is thalassemia. In today's video, we will discuss what are the various types of thalassemia, what are the clinical features of thalassemia, how you can diagnose the case of thalassemia, and what are the various treatment modalities available for the thalassemia. Before going in the detail, please subscribe my YouTube channel that is Biochemistry Basics by Dr. Amit and don't forget to press the bell icon so you can get all the notifications from it. So, thalassemia, the term thalassemia derived from the Greek word thalassa which means C because this disorder occurs more commonly among people living near the Mediterranean Sea. Thalassemia, it is a group of genetically transmitted disorder of hemoglobin synthesis which occurs due to the lack or decreased synthesis of alpha or beta globin chains of hemoglobin. And as there is a complete lack or decreased synthesis of particular globin chains, there will be the relative excess synthesis of other globin chains and this globin chains may precipitate in the cell causing hemolysis and ultimately it will lead to the hypochromic anemia. Hypochromic anemia it is one of the characteristic finding that you will see in case of thalassemia. Now types of thalassemia. So depending upon the genetic defect which lies in the synthesis of either alpha or beta globin chains Thalassemia are classified into two main types that is alpha thalassemia and beta thalassemia. If there is a defect in the synthesis of alpha thalassemia then it is called as alpha thalassemia. If there is a defect in the synthesis of beta globin chains then it is called as a beta thalassemia. First we will discuss the alpha thalassemia. Alpha thalassemia occurs due to the defective alpha globin chain synthesis. And this alpha globin chains are coded by four copies of alpha globin gene which is located on the chromosome number 16. So alpha thalassemia results from the genetic defect in one or more copies of alpha globin genes and it is characterized by either decreased or total absence of synthesis of alpha globin chains and depending upon that this alpha thalassemia are divided into four main types. First type is silent carrier type of alpha thalassemia. In the silent carrier type of alpha thalassemia, one of the four alpha globin gene is mutated. So they do not do not have any uh, clinical symptoms of thalassemia. Most of the patients are asymptomatic. Second type of alpha thalassemia is alpha thalassemia trait. In the alpha thalassemia trait, Two of the four copies of alpha globin genes are mutated and they will have mild anemia and it is not that much fatal condition. So that is alpha thalassemia trait, second type of alpha thalassemia. Now third type of alpha thalassemia is hemoglobin H disease. In the hemoglobin H disease, three out of the four globin genes are mutated and they have a moderate to severe hemolytic anemia. This is the third type of alpha thalassemia that is hemoglobin H disease. And the fourth type of alpha thalassemia is hydrops fatalis. In the hydrops fatalis, four copies of alpha globin genes are mutated and it is very lethal and dangerous condition. Most of the affected babies are stillborn. That means death occurs before the birth or they will die soon after birth. So that is hydrops fatalis. So we have discussed four main types of alpha thalassemia. First one is the asymptomatic carrier type. Second one is the alpha thalassemia trait. Second one, third one is the hemoglobin H disease. And the fourth one is the hydrops fatalis. Now beta thalassemia. So synthesis of beta globin chain is impaired due to the genetic defect in the beta globin genes. And there are the beta globin genes are coded by two copies of beta globin genes which is located on the chromosome number 11 as compared to the four copies of alpha globin genes which is which was located on the chromosome number 16 and it is characterized by decreased or total absence of synthesis of beta globin chains depending on that beta thalassemia is divided into two major types that is beta thalassemia minor which is also known as a beta thalassemia trait Second time, second type is 
beta thalassemia major. So first we will see the beta thalassemia minor. Beta thalassemia minor, which is also known as a beta thalassemia trait. So one of the two copies of the beta globin gene is mutated. It is a heterozygous state as compared to the beta thalassemia major, which is homozygous state. And the presence of one normal gene in the heterozygous state allows normal globin chain synthesis so that affected individuals are usually asymptomatic. As there is a presence of one normal gene in the heterozygous state, so there will be the normal globin chain synthesis will occur in the beta thalassemia minor and the most of the patients will be asymptomatic or they will have a mild anemia. Now beta thalassemia major. Beta thalassemia major, it is a homozygous state carrying two mutated beta globin genes. Thalassemia major leads to the severe anemia and the person will be having regular blood transfusion for the survival. So that is the mainstay of the mainstay treatment for the beta thalassemia major that is frequent blood transfusion. Now inheritance of thalassemia. So thalassemia is inherited as an autosomal recessive disorder and this is the picture showing the inheritance of the thalassemia so let's uh, discuss it if the mother is normal and if the father is normal then the children will be 100% normal if the mother is normal and the father is having thalassemia trait then there are the chances that 50% of the children will be normal and 50% of the children will be having thalassemia trait if the father and mother both have thalassemia trait, then there are the chances that 25% of the children will be normal, 50% of the children will be having thalassemia trait, and 25% of the children will be having thalassemia. So that is if father and mother both are trait. And if the mother is trait and father is normal, then 50% of the children will be normal and 50% of the children will be having thalassemia trait. That's why it is advisable to undergo thalassemia testing before going, before marrying a person who is having thalassemia trait. It is advisable to do the premarital counseling before marrying the person who is having thalassemia trait to avoid the occurrence of thalassemia in the future generation or future child. Now, sign and symptoms of thalassemia. So, the main Sign and symptoms of thalassemia are due to the anemia which is there in the thalassemia. Due to the anemia, there will be the slow growth. Patient will be coming with the complaints of weakness and fatigue. As there is an anemia, the appearance will be the pale. There will be the iron overload. Patient will also come with the complaints of the heart problems. There will be the abnormal swelling will be there. Abnormal bone structure, especially in the face and the skull. That will give the characteristic thalassemia facial features to the patients of thalassemia. So this is the picture showing the sign and symptoms of the thalassemia. Now typical thalassemia face and hair on and appearance in the skull. So this is the picture showing the typical thalassemia face and this is the hair on and appearance which is seen in the skull x-ray in case of thalassemia. It is one of the characteristic findings that you will see in the x-ray of the skull and it is frequently asked in the image based questions also. So this is the picture showing the thalassemia facial features. So the head will be the small, there will be the presence of epicanthal folds, there will be the thin upper lip, nose will be the short, there will be the low nasal breech and there will be the also presence of smooth filtrum and jaw will be the underdeveloped. So this is the typical thalassemia face that you will see in case of thalassemia. Now, what are the various lab investigations done for the diagnosis of thalassemia? So one of the gold standard investigation done for the diagnosis of thalassemia is hemoglobin electrophoresis, that is HB electrophoresis. So this is the picture showing the uh, bands of the normal person in the HB electrophoresis and the bands that is seen in the beta thalassemia. So as you can see in the normal person, the bands of the HBA is 
broad and large as compared to the HBF. But in case of thalassemia, the bands of the HBF, HBF will be larger and broad as compared to the HBA. So that is HB electrophoresis, which is the gold standard for the diagnosis of thalassemia. And this is the HB electrophoresis apparatus. With the help of this apparatus, you can carry out you can carry out electrophoresis for the thalassemia. This is the table showing the percentage of various hemoglobin in case of normal person, in case of thalassemia minor and in case of thalassemia major. In case of normal person, the percentage of HbA is 97 to 99% and percentage of fetal hemoglobin is less than 1%. In case of thalassemia minor, the percentage of HbA is 80 to 95 percent and percentage of HbF is 1 to 5 percent. While in case of thalassemia major, percentage of HbF will be more as compared to the HbA. That is 90 to 96 percentage of HbF will be present in the thalassemia major and percentage of HbA will be reduced. That is 0 to 10 percent. Now peripheral smear findings in case of thalassemia. So whenever you will do the peripheral smear examination in case of thalassemia, in the peripheral smear you can see anisopoikilocytosis that is alteration in the size, size and shape of the RBCs. Then there will be the microcytic hypochromic RBCs will also be there. There will be the mesophilic stapling. It is the characteristic uh, finding seen in case of thalassemia. There is a presence of cytoplasmic granules in the basophils. So that will give rise to the basophilic stapling. Then there will be the presence of teardrop cell. These are the teardrop cells. And there will be the presence of target cell also. These are the target cell. So this is the peripheral smear findings seen in case of thalassemia. Now, there is a one test available for the screening of thalassemia. So for the screening of thalassemia, one particular test is done that is called as a Nestroff test. So Nestroff test stands for Naked Eye Single Tube RBC Osmotic Fragility Test. Naked Eye Single Tube RBC Osmotic Fragility Test. And it is the screening test for the beta thalassemia trait. So in the uh, uh, Nestroff test, if the person is positive for the beta thalassemia trait, so the osmotic fragility of the RBC will be reduced. While the normal osmotic fragility of RBC is around 0.5 to 0.32%. This is the negative test and this is the positive test. So in the positive test, there is a reduced osmotic fragility of the RBC. The Nestroff test which is done for the screening of beta thalassemia trait. Now other lab findings that you will that will find in case of thalassemia are there will be the reduction in the MCV, MCHC, MCH and total ion binding capacity. Hepatoglobin levels will be reduced. There will be the increased in the serum ion, ferritin and percentage of transferrin saturation. And in the bone marrow study, you will find bone marrow will be hypercellular with reversed myeloid and erythroid ratio. So these are the other lab findings that you can find in case of, in case of thalassemia. Now treatment. So treatment in the thalassemia, the mainstay of the treatment is the blood, blood trans, transfusion. The person will be needing frequent blood transfusion because they will be, they will be having severe anemia. Second option is the bone marrow transfusion. So this is the picture showing the bone marrow transplant. And to avoid the iron overload, which is occurring due to the frequent blood transfusion, we are also giving iron chelating agent in the form of oral desferoxamine. So oral desferoxamine, it is an iron chelating agent, which is given in case of thalassemia to prevent the iron overload. So this is the picture showing the treatment modalities in case of thalassemia. These are the my references. Thank you for watching. Please like, share and subscribe Biochemistry Basics by Dr. Amit and don't forget to press the bell icon so you can get all the notifications from it. Thank you.